Good day everyone, the Dr. Polaris here. Orangutans are among the world's most instantly recognisable primates. With their reddish hair, elongated arms and distinctive facial masks, they have worked their way into the imaginations of us humans. Perhaps the most famous of these apes from popular culture is King Louie from Disney's The Jungle Book, where the jazz-singing orangutan kidnaps Mowgli so that he can learn how to be more like his human cousins. Other notable examples include the eponymous Dustin from the family comedy Dunstan Checks In, the cheeky sidekick of Clint Eastwood in Every Which Way But Loose, and the conservative law-bound Dr. Zaius from Planet of the Apes. Like all primates, orangutans have earned a persistent place in our thought due to their human-like appearance and actions, giving us a reminder of our place in the animal kingdom. In the wild, orangs live in the tropical rainforests of Borneo and Sumatra. Classified in the genus Pongo, orangs were originally considered to be one species. From 1996, they were divided into two species, the Bornean orangutan, Pongo pygmaeus, and the Sumatran orangutan, Pongo abellii. In November 2017, it was reported that a third species has been identified, the Tapanuli orangutan. These are the most arboreal of the great apes, and spend most of their time in trees. Their hair is reddish-brown, instead of the brown or black hair typical of gorillas and chimpanzees. Males and females differ in size and appearance. Dominant adult males have distinctive cheek pads and produce long calls that attract females and intimidate rivals. Younger males do not have these characteristics and resemble adult females. Orangutans are the most solitary of the great apes, with social bonds occurring primarily between mothers and their dependent offspring, who stay together for the first two years of their life. Fruit is the most important component of an orangutan's diet. However, the apes will also eat vegetation, bark, honey, insects, and even bird eggs. Orangutans are among the most intelligent primates. They use a sophisticated selection of tools and construct elaborate sleeping nests each night from branches and foliage. All three orangutan species are considered to be critically endangered. Human activities have caused severe declines in populations and ranges. Threats to wild orangutan populations include poaching, habitat destruction as a result of palm oil cultivation, and the illegal pet trade. Several conservation and rehabilitation organisations are dedicated to the survival of orangutans in the wild. The IUCN estimated in 2016 that around 100,000 orangutans survive in the wild. In 1973, there were 288,500, and their population is expected to further decrease to as few as 47,000 individuals by 2025. The Bornean orangutan population has declined by 60% in the past 60 years. Its range has become patchy throughout Borneo, being largely extirpated from various parts of the island, including the southeast. The largest remaining population is found in the forest along the Sabangal River, but this environment is also at risk. The current state of orang population decline is shocking, and if we are not careful, these close cousins of ours may well end up becoming extinct. This would be disastrous, as orangs are the last living members of a unique and ancient lineage of apes, the Pongines. If we have a look at the phylogenetic tree of all primates, we can see that the apes are split into two families. The first being the gibbons of Hylobatidae and the great apes of the family Hominidae. Gibbons split off during the early Miocene between 23 and 19 million years ago and have remained rather small in size. Hominidae split soon after with the Pongines diverging from the ancestors of gorillas, chimps and humans roughly 16 million years ago. Presumably originating in Africa, the Pongines soon spread to Eurasia, where they once inhabited a much wider range than do modern orangutans. During the late Miocene, representatives of the Pongines inhabited a huge area stretching from Turkey in the west to India, China and Southeast Asia. The climate during this time was generally warmer and drier than it is today, and the ancient relatives of orangs inhabited a wide variety of environments. The Turkish Ankaropithecus, for example, was a significantly smaller animal than orangs, weighing only 27 kilos as an adult. Like its living cousins, Ankaropithecus most likely fed on a diet of fruit and leaves. At the time, during the late Miocene, 
Turkey possessed a climate not unlike that of modern East Africa, with open savanna forests dominating the landscape. This ape is known from a single partial skull consisting of a palate and part of the upper jaw. A closely related genus, Shiva pithecus, is thankfully known from much better material. Shiva pithecus was about 1.5 metres in body length, similar in size to a modern orangutan. The shape of its wrists and general body proportions suggest that it spent a significant amount of its time on the ground, as well as in trees. It had large canine teeth and heavy molars, suggesting a diet of relatively tough food, such as seeds and savanna grasses. The environment in which this ape lived was cooler and drier than that inhabited by modern orangs. This genus has had an interesting history. The first incomplete specimens of Shiva pithecus were found in northern India in the 19th century. Another find was made in Nepal on the bank of the Tinau River, a western part of the country, in 1932. This find was named Rama pithecus. The discoverer, G. Edward Lewis, claimed that it was distinct from Shiva pithecus, as the jaw was more like a human's than any other fossil ape then known. A claim revived in the 1960s. At that time, it was believed that the ancestors of humans had diverged from other apes 14 million years ago. Biomechanical studies upset this view, suggesting that there was an early split between the orangutan ancestors and then the common ancestor of chimps, gorillas and humans. Meanwhile, more complete specimens of Rama pithecus were found in 1975 and 1976, which showed that it was less human-like than had been previously thought. It began to look more and more like Shiva pithecus, meaning that the older name must take priority. It is also possible that the fossils assigned to Rama pithecus belong to the female form of Shiva pithecus. The Sivalik specimens once assigned to Rama pithecus are now considered by most researchers to belong to one or more species of Shiva pithecus. As such, Rama pithecus is no longer regarded as a likely ancestor of humans. In 1982, David Pilbeam published a description of a significant fossil find formed by a large part of the face and jaw of a Shiva pithecus. The specimen bore many similarities to the orangutan skull and strengthened the theory, previously suggested by others, that Shiva pithecus was closely related to orangutans. Three species are currently recognised. Shiva pithecus indicus, which dates from about 12.5 to 10.5 million years ago. Shiva pithecus sivalensis, which lived from 9.5 to 8.5 million years ago. And finally, Shiva pithecus parvada, described in 1988. This species is significantly larger and dated to about 10 million years ago. Speaking of large size, the most massive of all apes, the famous Gigantopithecus, was also a member of the Pongin lineage. Gigantopithecus is an extinct genus of ape that existed from 2 million years ago to as recently as 100,000 years ago. At the same period as Homo erectus would have been dispersed, in what is now Vietnam, China and Indonesia, the primate fossil record suggests that the species of Gigantopithecus blackii were the largest known primate species that ever lived. Standing up to 2 metres tall and weighing as much as 300 kilograms, the first Gigantopithecus remains described by an anthropologist were found in 1935 by Ralph von Konigswald. Fossilised teeth and bones were often ground into powder and used in some branches of traditional Chinese medicine. Since then, Relatively few fossils of Gigantopithecus have been recovered. Aside from molars recovered in Chinese traditional medicine shops, Li Chuen Cave in Luzhou, China, has produced numerous Gigantopithecus blacky teeth, as well as several jaw bones. Other sites yielding significant finds were in Vietnam and India. There are presently three extinct species named G. blacky, G. bilus porensis, and G. giganteus. Peptide sequences obtained from 5G blackie tooth enamel proteins reported in 2019 have indicated a Miocene divergence from the orangutan lineage of approximately 10 to 12 million years ago. The Gigantopithecus pongo clade in turn is thought to have diverged from African great apes about 19 million years ago. Gigantopithecus's life appearance is not known because of the fragmentary nature of its fossil remains. However, Given the enormous size and weight of the animal, it would have spent its time on the ground. 
Based on its size estimates, Gigantopithecus possibly had few or no enemies when fully grown. However, young, weak or injured individuals may have been vulnerable to predation by big cats, large constrictor snakes, crocodiles, hyenas and Homo erecta. Early opinion held that Gigantopithecus was an obligate biped. The majority view today is that the weight of such a large, heavy animal would put enormous stress on the creature's legs, ankles and feet if it walked bipedally. While if it walked on all fours, like gorillas, its weight would be better distributed over each limb. The genus lived in Asia and probably inhabited bamboo forests, since its fossils are often found alongside those of the extinct ancestors of the giant panda. Most evidence points to Gigantopithecus being a herbivore, however, Tooth enamel isotope analysis indicates that it was not a bamboo specialist like pandas, but had a more generalist vegetarian diet similar to that of other orangutans. The jaws of Gigantopithecus are deep and very thick. The molars are low crowned and flat and exhibit heavy enamels suitable for tough grinding. The canine teeth are neither pointed nor sharp, while the incisors are small, peg-like and closely aligned. The features of the teeth and jaws suggest that the animal was adapted to chewing tough, fibrous food by cutting, crushing and grinding. This creature was also highly sexually dimorphic, with males being much larger than females, suggesting a high level of competition between adult males and possibly a group structure similar to that of gorillas. An examination of the microscopic scratches and gritty plant remains embedded in Gigantopithecus teeth suggests that they fed on seeds and fruit. Gigantopithecus may have become extinct approximately 100,000 years ago because the climate change during the Pleistocene era changed the plants from forest to savanna and their food supply thus became limited. There is also speculation that competition with Homo erectus may have contributed to the extinction of this species. This is because both Homo erectus and Gigantopithecus fossils were discovered in South China indicating that the two species may have coexisted at the same time. Coexistence may have led to a competition over food, which was quickly becoming a rarity with the changing climate of the Pleistocene. Several other pongines inhabited Asia until the end of the Miocene. Lufeng Pithecus was one of these. It dwelt in the forests of China until about 10 million years ago. It is known from thousands of dental remains and a few skulls and probably weighed about 50 kilograms. Like Shiva Pithecus, Lufeng Pithecus had heavy molars and large canine teeth. While Lufeng Pithecus is generally considered to be a primitive pongine by Western observers, Chinese scientists have noted a set of features that are more reminiscent of hominines. These include a broad interorbital distance, an African subnasal morphology, frontal sinuses, and a number of dental similarities. A single mandibular fragment from the site of Longpo in Sichuan, China, originally assigned to the genus Homo, has actually been argued to be more similar to Lufeng Pithecus, suggesting that the genus may have survived until as recently as 2 million years ago, possibly overlapping with both Gigantopithecus and ancient Pongo species in the region. One of the original authors who assigned the Longpo specimen to the genus Homo now considers it to be a mystery ape. A possibly related species from Thailand was assigned to the genus Corart pithecus. The species is known only from teeth, which appear to be intermediate in morphology between Sheba pithecus and modern orangutans. The species lived between 10 and 7 million years ago. Corart pithecus was a close relative of modern orangutans and may have been their direct ancestor. The modern genus Pongo originated in Southeast Asia roughly 5 million years ago and had a much wider range than living orangutans, inhabiting southern China, Vietnam and Thailand. It is likely that the arrival of humans in Southeast Asia during the Pleistocene led to the extinction of these mainland species, with the three living species on Borneo and Sumatra the only ones left. If we are not careful, even these remarkable animals may suffer a similar fate. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be covering Gambo, an unusual marine animal that washed ashore on a West African beach in 1983. See you again soon. Cheerio.